That oh, yeah. thing caught this, a huge fish. This was the thing that caught the fish. That little thing? That was the thing. It's peaceful just being out here, isn't it? Yeah, it's peaceful for a while, and then the uh, frustration overrides. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you ready to go in and just take the fish with your, you know? I'm ready to go down to the freaking local hardware shop, make a little cocktail, come back here. Boom! All the fish come up. <laughs> We got ambushed pretty damn Two guys on the right hand side lost half his face. One guy lost half his body. He was driving. He was 21 years old. He had no shot. Oh, no, it's not really about what can we do for you. It's, we're done with you. Let's move you on out. And that's what happens to us. Change. If you could change one thing in your life, what would it be? How would it affect you? How might it affect others in the world we live in? Would you be willing to sacrifice your life for a higher cause? We talk about selfless heroes, about being selfless. Well, I don't think there's a more courageous group of people than the people in uniform for our country. People who are ready and willing to sacrifice their very lives for you and me. Here in this intimate setting of Ketchum, Idaho, the concept is simple. Look at our, look at our gym, this is our gym, you know? Here's the track. Now look at how far that spin is from your line. God. Good. Real, real, real. Tom Islin and the people of Sun Valley Adaptive Sports have created a program where in five days, they try to help rehabilitate a diverse group of veterans, wounded okay. warriors, through the power of fly fishing and nature. I really think that it's true. If you can put someone in a situation like this and allow them just to slow down. I mean, it really is just standing. It just slows you down. You look around and everything's just peaceful and you'll see a dragonfly or you'll see a bird come by or, you know, you'll see a fish move. And pretty soon the time starts to pass and you kind of fall into um, a cycle where you're not pressed by time, but time just goes by. And I think that's a another really healing property where we're not trapped by time, we can be freed by time. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, that just, it just slays my back when I sneeze. Do we need to do anything? No. A roadside bomb went off, and it went off underneath us. It flipped our Humvee. I was just worried about all my boys. I could care less about me, and so I got up, not realizing my back is fucked up as it is, and we start engaging, we make it out, we did what we had to do. 
Made it out, well, but a couple days later, I was in so much pain and my legs were going numb. And I took one step and I just fell to the ground. And later I find out, yeah, you, you snapped your L4 and your L5. Like, oh, good to go. Some of these guys may have it harder than I do. I mean, Joe, he lost his leg. I mean, if you really sit and think about it, imagine losing a body part and just wanting to live on. Uh, I've seen guys lose half their face. You know, they're good looking guys. Everyone will say, yeah, he was a good looking guy. You know, he doesn't have a face, you know. No girl's gonna want him, you know. He probably wants to have a family later on in life, but no one's gonna want him. I mean, how does he handle that? I'm uh, gonna be a little disheartened. Nothing. Yeah, I'll probably, oh, yeah. I'm gonna come over here and sit next to Joe, have him show me how to fish. I'm not catching a thing. Going to Iraq and it's 130 something degrees and you have all your gear on, you're thousands of miles away from home and you know, just a day ago you're talking to a buddy and today, you know, he got shot in the head and you saw his head explode. Everyone's like, wow, dude. You joke about it, you laugh, but you know, you all share that. And when you go into the civilian life, people, it's, you have friends, but you don't have comrades. You feel lonely because there's no one else who can understand. There's no one else that you can talk to to share your stories. You feel like they, they've been there. You know, being with all these other combat vets, I can look at them and I already know that they know we're on the same sheet of music. We're all thinking the same thing. And there's that survivor's guilt. It's like, I can't believe I made it back. Mm -hmm. I was the one in charge, but you know, some mother, our fathers and grandmothers had to get the news that, you know, their loved one didn't make it back. And I, I think about like, wow, I mean, they deserve to be here more than me. But all these other guys will say the same thing. You take all of what you've seen, all of what you feel, and you come back, and you actually now are able to to feel that. And it comes at such a force and intensity that it sometimes sometimes it's not you're not able to handle it. I've been to the hospital many times, more so than for my back, because you know I'm having too many dark moments, and. It's embarrassing to say that, but you know, I'm not really, if it can help people understand what we go through, then I'm all about saying it. But yeah, I can't tell you how many times uh, I've tried to, you know, end it all. And just to get away, just to not feel that, not to have my mind go back to that constantly. Everything takes you back, sights, smells, and it's hard. I keep thinking about killing things. Not people, not, not people. That's what I do, I mean, y'all you are seeing you zone out. I sort of drift away and uh, I think about going out and, and stalking and, and you know, reading the river, reading the lake, looking for the lily pads, looking for that log that the bass is underneath it. And, uh, so I mean, this isn't this is like a, a new experience, but it's definitely something that I've been uh, I've been short on lately. What did you call it? The Yuli. Is it? Oh, right. It's pretty similar to it. Yeah. Just talking about heroes, and I personally don't see me as a hero. But I really think the heroes are those that never made it back. They gave the ultimate sacrifice that we've never given. What we did, we chose to do voluntary. It was a voluntary uh, action, and we did it with great heart. Times it sucked. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, life right now is very hard for me. I mean, I didn't really want to come out. I can't do things that I wish I could do. Can't work. Even though I try to work, I can't do it. And I come here and right away you guys said, here, there's a pole, do your thing. 
reality, you guys made me feel normal again. So on a serious note, like, I just have a challenge. This, this is where the dude comes. This is a very sacred spot. It's a place of healing for me. So I'm just going to challenge people for like 30 seconds. Well, listen, to just close hear. your eyes and listen to nature. And whatever comes out, comes out. For just 30 seconds. And watch how fast the mind will want to do it. So on three. One, two, three. How do you feel about that, Joe? I, you know, I, all I focused on was a lot of things that you can hear that water running. And after that, I, I swear I heard a fish feed. Did you? I, I heard it right there, and I'm like, then I heard something over here, a little bug or something like that, and I'm like, and I just try to, you know, and I'm smiling because I'm hearing it, but to relax, you have to relax, you know, your muscles. That's why I kind of turned my head this way, and I was like, after that, I was thinking about laying a cot out right here. I'm not even a cot, a sleep bag. I'm just going. That would put me to sleep. Like I have some issues with sleeping sometimes. One of the hard things you've been is like trying to find a feel like you're in a safe place. Yeah, yeah. You feel yeah. safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In all your senses, your eyes, ears, just everything, smell, everything, just so peaceful and beautiful. You know, it's it's just, it's great. Today, when I was fishing. It was, it may sound funny, but guys maybe who've been fishing a long time, I was out there and there was like nothing. It was me, the guy, and the water. A lot of people in the military were athletes. You know what I mean? Men and women or whatever, they were athletes, straight up. I, I was captain of the football team, captain of the wrestling team. I did do the discus for track, do the shot put, do the javelin, all that. When I first got injured, I, I, what am I gonna do? In one night. But now I'm like, whatever I want. Yeah, I'm not worried about thinking I'm sitting in a chair, you know, my guy grabs onto it and he's like, all right, come on, he brings me out and there's water. He is playing this fish to it Absol absolutely perfect. I'm cool, I'm like, okay, yeah, you got me, I'm casting, you know, I'm fishing. How's your wrist feel? Oh, man, it's all tight and, woo. Just, it brought back my competitive in. spirit. Brought back your competitive spirit. He's been talking smack all week. <laughs> all week. Yeah, let strip, him. Strip, strip. Yeah, let him go, let him go, let him go, let him go. You could tell now, like, Robert over here, he's like, I gotta get one. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, Robert, it's not an easy deal. It's a whole other skill set to open up the passion of my life even that much more. And uh, it's something I'm gonna pass down to my children and my children's children. I'll just put a lot more juice on it. The benefit that I got here this week is going to be multiplied out throughout my life and the life of others, when, you know, God willing. So that alone is awesome and amazing. Look at that toe. Woo! Nice. Eat me, Joe. Eat me. <laughs> Today's not your day, buddy. You are natural. Yeah. OK, <laughs> I am not. You are well, pretty down. Uh, down on the ground for, for quite a while. This is, uh, it's really brought me up. It really gave me a, an idea that people care, the staff. You guys are great. I mean, I don't know. I don't know where they grow you guys, but uh, <laughs> my great, great guide. I'm gonna tell you something about that real quick. Um, everybody needs a guide like this. Not up this just. Hey, good hey, job, Joe. Joe. Stay on him. This guy gets Stay up, on. goes get a tube, no waders on or anything, jumps in the pond and like goes halfway across to get this fish out. I don't know what you're paying him, but he needs to be paid more. <laughs> <laughs> because we're going to do that. You know, the water is cold today. You know, and the water is, OK, 57 degrees. Come on, you know?
Oh, that's keyboard. Don't <laughs> ever see that. This is so ridiculous. <laughs> what, what is it? Where's Ravel? Whoa! Oh, oh, mother of Mary! Oh. I've never fly fished in my life. Now I'm catching many, many fish, you know. I don't want to brag again, but I'm catching a lot of fish, you know. I'm, yeah, I'm very go humble. Ahead, go. But go ahead and do it anyway. But the thing you know, is, you know, I've never fished in my life. I mean, in all honesty, I've really never fished. But between, you know, what the guy is telling me and the opportunities here, I'm just like, and catching them. You know, so okay, that's one step. You know, it's, it's a more sedentary sport, but, you know, what say the other physical sports give me a comes? But I like this, it's nice and quiet and, you know, it's just. I'm a bird hunter. Man, I love bird hunting. That's just, it's so much fun. And I can still take down a pheasant the exact same as I used to be able to. Yeah. And yeah, I figured it out. It took me a few a few shots with clay pigeons. I retrained my eye. I, I know what things look like now. So it's back to old me. When I'm out bird hunting, it's back to old me. I'm not blind. I'm not. I'm not nothing. I'm, I'm just old me bird hunting. You know, I will be normal one day, and this gave me hope that I can I can function in a in a normal way. And just got treated like a normal person by everybody here. You know. Now, shoot. I'm thinking going down the line and maybe they'll be cat making videos of me casting. I'll put them out for other people that want to fly fish. And I'm not joking at all. With the PTSD, and no one really understands. They have ways to help you cope with it, but they don't have ways to cure it. Mentally, it's so much more difficult than it is physically because your body can heal, but your mind, a lot of times it can't. It's damaged. You just have to learn how to adapt. Thank mm -hmm. you.